This week on InCycle, with the advancement of recovery as a vital ingredient in the life of a pro rider, we look into the science of cryotherapy. Cryotherapy reduces the inflammation in the muscles and both are responsible for a faster and more efficient recovery. We continue our diary series behind the scenes following the fortunes of Etix Quick Step at the Tour de France. At the end of the day, you know, we have a goal and I think uh, cycling, this, people see it more like an individual sport, but actually it's also a real, a real team sport and uh, we are with nine riders, but actually we're working with eight guys for, for one guy. But first, we bring you all the news and gossip at La Tour with our lead out. On this week's lead out, keeping promises, special days and iconic fan clubs. But first, it's not unusual to have team mascots, but what is unusual is the amount of sheep starting to take on the role. It's a signing we picked up, but it was an awkward time in the season, but we got him on board just for the tour. Uh, Peloton the sheep, he's actually a gift from the Grand Day Park committee. I'm not sure the, the exact name of that, but we got him at the, the start of the tour, and we're taking him around with us, and then we'll uh, give him to a fan at the end. And is he being well looked after? What's he been up to? It's been in quarantine, actually, because if somebody gets sick on the team, we just have to, like, we have to quarantine them, send them ahead to the next hotel. And um, he spent a couple days in the, van, in the van that goes to the finish, just uh, resting up and making sure that we all stay healthy. He's feeling much better now, though, as you can see. And now he's not actually the only sheep on tour. No, he's, he's just, he's the little sheep that could, frankly. He's uh, much smaller than the other sheep here. And we should say, the other sheep came first, it was a uh, Trek. Trek has Herman the sheep, much larger, much more of a presence. Peloton's a little bit more behind the scenes, but as you can see, he's a, he's out here today. It's not uncommon for a DS to make promises to help motivate the team for a stage win during the tour, and for I Am Cycling's Lionel Marie, it meant a haircut of sorts. I said before, a few few days ago, I said the first guy who will win, he can cut my hair. So yesterday it's happened. During the dinner, Fontano was uh, laughing and all the team also, but uh, no problem. Jarlison is a special guy, he's always happy, always smiling. And um, the, first, the first week was not that good, but he, he was uh, very focused on that stage, so everything went well. So it's happened not so often in cycling, so we were all happy. If we can win another stage, I, I have to think about what they can cut again. You have to be very, very careful, I think. Yeah, yeah, because Sandre show, show us uh, right now, if you finish third, he's close to win, so I, I start to be afraid. Next time they, they said they want to do a tattoo, so I'm, I, I'm very afraid. I don't know. Which rider would you trust most to do a tattoo? Perhaps Sandre is an, also an artist. So we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, it can be a good thing. For the African team dimension data, the Tour de France has been a great success already and much of that is attributed to their first Tour stage win one year ago. Last year when Steve won on this, on this stage and, and became our first ever stage winner in the Tour de France, for our, you know, the, our first ever participation in the Tour de France, it was special. You know, winning a stage is special and winning it on Mandela Day you know, just takes that to another level. And you know, last year's stage defined us and so today we try and you know, do something again and, and do something really, really special. Can you tell us what Mandela Day is for people who are not South Africans? No, I mean, Mandela is a, was an incredible human being that united a nation and did something that was completely, you know, out of the ordinary. And uh, I think that's what this team has done as well. We've united the continent of, uh, of riders that are multicultural, multidiverse, and, and have been incredibly successful and learned from it and, and gone into a sport that where African cycling didn't exist before and punched way above its weight. And, of course, about overcoming adversity, which I believe is also something the team had to do last year as well. No, absolutely. I mean, last year on that day, we were so nervous. It was such a big day for us. And, you know, our bus driver and, the, and our bus nearly went off a cliff and it was up a narrow road. And we got to the start really, really late. And the riders had little time to prepare and get ready for the stage. And, and we still won. For fan clubs, watching their favoured rider at the Tour is a dream come true. But for Fabian Cancellara's fan club, it's bittersweet, as it's his last. 
So we are 250 uh, all around the streets down here, 40 people up here. We will build up a 300 square meter banner, a big heart with uh, the words, letters, thank you Fabian. And uh, the people who are up here, they, they want to wave the flags and uh, cheer for Fabian. And what are you going to do next year when Fabian stops cycling? Yeah, we're going to have a lot of, uh, lot of holidays. So uh, because during the year, almost uh, every holiday week is, is going for uh, following Fabian. Uh, we have many friends in Belgium. So next year we're going to be back uh, at, uh, at the Quadamont, have an amazing party. And it would be the first year that Fabian will join us because he don't have to ride. A professional cyclist completes tens of thousands of kilometers a year, so well-recovered muscles are a pivotal part of any good performance. It can make the marginal difference between launching a devastating attack and being left behind in the deciding moments of the race. But what actually happens to the muscles after a hard stage? There are two changes in the muscle. Firstly, there is a change in the metabolites because we need energy and from breakdown of the energy causes a lot of byproducts metabolites so these are in the muscles and they change the so-called inner milieu of the muscles the second is that there is a micro damage of different structures in the muscles which cause inflammation that means that the muscle soreness the uh, insufficiency of the muscle and also the damage of the muscle are depending. That means on the other hand that a good recovery is very very important because on the one hand you can increase performance, on the other hand you keep the organism, the body healthy. Aquilo has taken the lead when it comes to helping the best riders by optimizing their recovery within scientific parameters. Tests made at the Austrian Institute of Sports Medicine emphasize the importance and effect of cryotherapy. In the last years, we had a lot of different measures for recovery, like sauna, massage. Nowadays, cryotherapy is coming into the market, and there are some studies showing that cryotherapy will enhance the recovery. So with the Aquilo cryotherapy, we have a new system available on the market which offers a very optimal temperature from 10 to 12 centigrades and also a compression of the legs. Therefore, more blood and more oxygen is coming into the muscle, restoring the energy. And it's this combination of cryotherapy and compression that produces hemodynamic changes, enlarging the deep vessels, stimulating better recovery by reducing cellular metabolism and inflammation in the muscles. Cryotherapy reduces the inflammation in the muscles and both are responsible for a faster and more efficient recovery. I'm always e eager to try anything new and obviously anything that's going to make sort of my life easier on the bike. It's effectively like having a nice bath without getting wet. So um, it's nice, I mean it's great after stages just for the sort of scientific part of recovery but then also if it's been a real hot stage as well it's just, it's just really pleasant. For the best and most experienced members of the Movistar team, using the Aquilo system post-race has been a vital part of their routine since last year's Tour de France. And that preparation for victory seems to be working. Halfway through 2016, Movistar are fast approaching as many wins as the successful season of 2015 when they topped the UCI team rankings. It's amazing how things have progressed. So we're very privileged to be the first guys to to get hold of this new technology, then add to that the mental side of things that we know we're having, you know, a, probably a better recovery system than other teams. And doing well in cycling is, the ones that do best is the ones that tick the most boxes and there's a lot of boxes to tick. So um, yeah, and this is, this is one of those boxes. And obviously in movie star we are, we're ticking that box. A study is being carried out on the benefits of the Aquilo system. It's tested the recovery of the muscles after being put through multiple rounds of intensive training, all to maximum exhaustion, and the results are significant. We are measuring not only the load, not only the lactate, not only the heart rate, not only uh, creatine kinase and some other blood parameters, but we are measuring uh, also the muscle stiffness. There are different muscle groups involved in different uh, activities like cycling or running or ski cross countries. But the principle of 
uh, fatigue, the principle of muscle soreness, this is always the same. Cryotherapy is improving recovery, boosting performance and making life easier for elite athletes. And now it's within the reach of passionate amateurs. So a lot of people are doing sports and especially if they grow older, they need not only a good management of the training, but also a good management of the recovery. Useful because on the one hand you can increase performance, on the other hand you keep the organism, the body healthy. And this is very important, both for professionals as for amateurs. The Tour de France holds a special place and is a pinnacle for any rider. Laurence Ten Dam is amongst those to have experienced this pinnacle, although an eighth tour looked extremely unlikely after the 36-year-old made some significant lifestyle decisions at the end of last season. I called my manager and told him to quit everything in Europe because I wanted to live in the United States with my wife and kids. That's what we did. We went to the US, but he said to wait, not so quick. I wanted to ride for a small American team, but he asked me, what if you just live in the US and ride in Europe for two months per year, including California, Switzerland and the tour? I told him that if it was a possibility, of course I would want that. And then after that, the race is in the US. With plenty left in the legs, the tour was still on his mind, and it didn't take long before Team Giant Alpacine would put a halt on his new plans. I told him that when I was a little boy, the tour was my dream, and I do want to ride the tour again, but I know that for now, I want to travel with my kids. He went to several teams with my wishes and eventually Giant needed a climber and that was a perfect solution for me because I can do what I want and I can do the best race of the year. So I'm very happy. The Giant Alperson outfit's seen the growth and development of its riders. Both Tom de Moulin's recent Grand Tour successes and French favourite Warren Barguil's efforts as a climber suggest a great future. These are two completely different riders. Warren is a pure climber, he must get his results from climbing, and Tom is the other way around, he is a time trialist. You can compare Tom with Indurain from the past. Tom's strength is his time trial, and I have been saying this for several years. If you have a tour like 2012 where Wiggins won, with not too many difficult climbs, doable for time trialists, with two time trials of 40 to 50 kilometers, I think he can score highly in the GC. Tendam, now based in California, may have to rethink his plans of a pro-continental team, as the World Tour still calls. August last year, we decided to go to America, and we decided to evaluate next August. So I cannot tell you much about the future. I will discuss that with my wife after the tour. We will have a look then if I will ride for another year and on what level. But for now, it is going well this tour, on a high level, and that feels good. At the end of the day, you know, we have a goal and I think uh, cycling is... People see it more like an individual sport, but actually it's also a real, a real team sport. And uh, we were with nine riders, but actually we were working with eight guys for, for one guy in some stages. So, yeah, then at the end we, we all win. You know, uh, maybe for the world it looks different and there's only one winner, but uh, we have the feeling it's the, it's the team who wins and that's the most important. The story of Etix Quicksteps Tour de France with our behind the scenes access with the team continues this week as we focus on the role of the domestics. We hear from the workhorses of the team, Max Ricchesi, Fabio Sabatini and Julien Vermont as they deal with the ongoing daily pressures for success. I sometimes think because domestic or, or workers, it sounds a little bit negative sometimes. 
we just have to keep in mind a few of our riders was actually domestic workers here. They could be captains and some other teams. So just to make our selections of a language, you're bloody superstar. So we take that Martin, we take Kittel, okay, what does he need and what does he need? We try building it up at, at two stages. The lead out is like almost more crazy than the sprinters, aren't they? You know, they're like fearless. Like Kiesa, I didn't know him before this year. I knew he came from Lampa, but I didn't really knew him. And uh, when, when you see him, you think like he's sort of like a account man or something working in the bank. And, 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 and like, like, it's sort of like, and the same with Sabatini. He's so calm, he's always so, so easy. But somehow they managed to have that like little soldier bottom, the push. And now, now we're going into war, like getting into mad dogs. And uh, we love it. <laughs> My role in the team is to ride in front of the last lead-out man, Fabio Sabatini, for the sprint in the last kilometre. I'm very happy with my role in the team, guiding Marcel to the last 200 metres. Sometimes we do it perfectly. Sometimes we're a bit off. But that's the Tour de France for you. I think we're a complete team during the Tour. But it's not always easy to do everything really well. Because the level is so high. So it doesn't always just depend on us, but on the rest of the teams too. We've noticed that when the team is united, we usually go on to win the stage. In general, when a teammate wins, it feels like a proper team victory. Because we all work so hard together. And it feels like all of our hard work and my little bit of work too, has led to the victory. We go out with the motivation to compete for the stage. But unfortunately, you can't always win, and it doesn't always go your way. Everybody was on the limit in the final as well. Such a hard day, and then uh, yeah, you see a uh, small gap was made a small gap in the red gone. Pretty even. That's life. The first thing about thinking about Julian is probably his haircut, isn't it? <laughs> like <laughs> he looked like somebody just coming out of the hairdresser every morning. I don't know how to do it. Uh, next to that, of course, is. Uh, He's a really strong cyclist. My role is actually to uh, work for Marcel, also a little bit uh, for Dan. People think like, oh, uh, you know, the breakaway is there, they will catch it like at uh, 10k from the finish or five. It's all well calculated, but at the end, uh, at the end it's, not, uh, it's never easy. You're, it's actually me or the other rider who is riding who has to calculate. We feel the breakaway if it's uh, going hard or going slow and you take, take back time easy or not. And uh, it's important to. <laughs> to to do to make a good calculation and you always have to keep in mind that they keep some reserve for the final also so it's not like people decide the road if you see them passing if you're like 45k you know, or 50 or 55 it's not I mean it's not a big difference and but when the guys in the bunch come to see you and uh, some even some big riders like oh, good job and you know it's like oh, wow well, yeah, it's nice you know it gives some some extra motivation you know and then. Yeah, just it's rewarding for your work you do.
yeah, you know, it's it's live. No, it's cycling. It's uh, actually it's a hard sport. Eh? It's not like football. Yeah, or, or you win or you lose. But in, in cycling, you have more chance to lose. Eh? So with like uh, almost 200 riders, and yeah, there's only one who can win. First of all, I want to say that my team did a really good job. Um, leading me out, bringing me to the final, controlling the race. I'm very proud of that. Uh, we had a good talk about it yesterday, so that's something um, that is also really important for, for me. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result that we wanted. From teamwork on, I think uh, Julian, Kees, uh, Vakoc, they really did already a very hard and very good job. They were there, they are still not dead, they, they still have, have uh, some powers left. So we, could, we still can use them in the last week. So uh, I think this team is still strong enough to control or have the leaders uh, the third week also. The Kees and Sabatini are still okay, they are still strong. Uh, they can support uh, Kittel for sure until Paris. Uh, they will stick to him in the hard stages, uh, they will help him over the mountains. And all is focused now for Marcel on the, onto, the, onto the Champs Elysees. So we we'll keep them all together and uh, we, we have again a big fight on the Champs Elysees. The second week is always extremely difficult. Passing the second week, getting into the third, sort of you can start to smell Paris, you know, because you will see the end. The, the pipe Bible, the, the book, the race book getting thinner and thinner every day. You're pulling out a few pages, you know, and they're getting thinner and thinner. So like last week, sort of, you 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 start to get a word recover again. But the but the second week week is it's a nightmare. That's all for this week. Join us next time. But until then, keep up to date with us on social media.